Hey Fenville fam, Miss Martin here, um, and today I'm going to teach you the basics of how to sew. I learned how to sew when I was about seven years old, and I have to say I think I've used these skills every single year since then. Sewing is really cool because it's something that you can know everything there is to know about it and make some really cool stuff, or you can know just the tiniest little bit of basics, and honestly it's going to be pretty helpful for your life. You don't need to know very much about it for it to be really useful. So the skills I'm going to teach you today are going to be ones you can use to like fix or alter clothing that you have. Um, something that's really cool about this is I'm asked all the time if I will just like fix something for one of my friends, like, oh my button fell off, or like I have this hole here, or it's a little too long or a little too big. Um, and this is a skill that you can use in the future so that you don't always have to keep buying new clothes. Um, it's good for our wallets and it's good for the environment if we can fix things and keep wearing them rather than having to replace them always. Um, so first we're going to go over some of the tools that you'll need. I'm going to show you everything for hand sewing, so if you don't have a sewing machine that's great. Um, and then we'll learn some tools and some terms and then I'll actually teach you how to do some of the stuff. So the first thing to talk about is the difference between pins and needles. Um, a lot of people maybe know there's a difference but don't know what it is. Um, so this here is, it's kind of blurry, um, but this is a needle. Um, it's long and narrow and it's metal and there's nothing on the end except for a teeny tiny little opening which is where the thread is going to go. So these are needles, you put the thread through here and this is what you use to sew it. Um, this here is a pin. So pins have either like a plastic ball on the end or the metal has been flattened. And these um, are just temporary. They're used to hold the fabric together while you're sewing to hold it in place, kind of like a safety pin or a clothes pin. Um, but you don't do any actual sewing with them and you take them out as you go because they can get in the way. So that's like the first important difference. Um, one thing I need to do that I'm not very good at is remember to put my needles back somewhere safe so I don't lose them on the floor because I've done that before. Um, just one note about the needle also, this opening at the end is called the eye of the needle, um, and then the other end obviously is the sharp end. Um, the next term I want you to know is seam, um, S-E-A-M, and this is just um, this, the place where two pieces of fabric are attached together. So here I have two pieces of fabric that I have sewn together. This line in the middle is the seam. If we look at it from the back, it's attached like this. Um, there's a little line of stitching here. I actually sewed this one by hand, so the stitching is bigger than it would be if you did it on a machine. Um, and something important to note is when it's sewn together, there's this little bit of extra stuff, extra fabric. This is called the seam allowance. We can open it up if we want because there's two of them. Um, seam allowance is really important because if we stitch right along the edge here, um, this is going to ravel and it's going to pull out. And as this ravels, um, our fabric is actually going to disappear and our stitching is going to fall out. So if you ever get to the point of sewing with a pattern, um, it's going to tell you how big to make your seam allowance. Um, another thing to point out is one side of this fabric is colorful. It's like a black and white check design. The other side is not colorful. This is the back, right? This is the side we want to see. So the pretty colorful side is called the right side and the white side is called the wrong side. And this is incredibly, incredibly important because if you are sewing two pieces of fabric together, you want to have them right sides together. Um, so just get that in your head right now. If you're making a seam, if you're sewing two pieces of fabric together, right sides together. Because, so let's look at what happens. If we are looking at this thinking, I want to sew these together, great. Putting them like this, which is the wrong way because it's wrong side to right side we would line it up and we'd probably pin it and we'd sew it and then when we get to the point of opening it up what have we done here we have the right side with a nice seam with the wrong side here and if we turn it around we have the right side here with the ugly seam allowance back here so if we are always careful and we put the right sides together it looks ugly from the outside, but then when we stitch along here and open it up, everything looks good and everything's colorful and all of the ugly seam allowance is hidden. 
So if you really get into sewing, I promise you this is a mistake you're gonna make because I've made it countless times even though I've been sewing for most of my life. Um, the last thing I want you to know, the last term to know is hem, H-E-M. Hem is really just the name of where a garment ends at the bottom. So the very bottom of your pants is the hem. Um, the bottom of your sleeve here is a hem. The bottom of your shirt is a hem. Um, and usually hems are made by, I have a shirt here for reference. Um, this is the hem and you can see like, here's the right side. The wrong side is slightly lighter colored and they've just turned it up a couple times and then stitched across it. So they do this when it's made, but this is helpful if you ever want to do it yourself at home. Um, I'm wearing these funny flowy pants today that are made out of a different fabric. And these have a hem that is finished a little bit differently. So this was made on a serger. Um, I don't have a serger. Most people don't have them at home. Um, it's a different type of sewing machine, but they didn't turn it up because the fabric is too soft. They just left it out and then put that stitching all over it so that it doesn't ravel. So now that the skills we're going to learn, um, I'm going to teach you how to thread a needle and how to tie knots, um, how to sew on a button, um, and how to fix a seam, and quickly how to hem, because those are all things that you might need to do with your clothes or your friend's clothes or your sibling's clothes. So how to thread a needle. Um, it doesn't seem like it should be that hard, but let me tell you, it's just something that takes practice. Um, I was part of a sewing class in college, and there were college students that would spend hours of homework trying to thread and make knots. So don't get discouraged if it takes you a while, um, but I have my needle here ready. I'm gonna find the end that has the eye. Um, I like to lick my thread because it helps the little extra flyaways stay inside, just like if you put mousse on your hair to keep your hair from flying away. Um, it makes this easier to thread. And so I have about a half an inch, because if I have too much, just gonna be floppy. I want about half an inch. I've licked it and then I will like kind of press it and squeeze it to get a good point. And then I'm just gonna find the eye of the needle and thread it through. If you uh, have a hard time with this, uh, they have bigger needles for beginners. Usually a bigger needle is easier to handle. Um, they also make things that can help you with this. Also, I haven't tried this, but I've heard a trick is you can spray hairspray on the end of your needle um, and like make it a sharp point and let it dry, or sorry, hairspray on the end of your thread um, and it'll help it go through. Um, so we have it threaded through. Um, there's two ways you can sew. You can leave one longer than the other and then you'll put a knot in the long one and you'll sew with one thread and you'll pull the other one through the fabric. Um, or to show you sewing on a button, because buttons need a little extra strength, we're actually going to sew with both threads. So I want you to pull them until they're about even. And I'm going to show you a good trick to make a knot. Um, so you really want these really evenly lined up. You can see that they're just about the same length. And what you're going to do now, rather than trying to tie a knot like you would on your shoelaces, um, this is a trick that also might take some practice. I want you to lick the thread again. So these are two threads together, but you can do this with one as well. You're going to take your finger. If you're right-handed, you're going to take your left finger. And you're going to pinch it and then wrap it around your index finger. So we've got it looped around our finger like this. And then with your thumb, you're still pinching the two ends together. I want you to pinch and then roll it off your fingertip. And as you roll it, it's going to twist all in on itself. You can see it's all twisted around each other. And once it's twisted, you're going to pinch it at the top and just pull it towards the end. And you have just magically twisted it all up so that it gets so tangled that it makes a knot on the end. So the nice thing about this is it makes really big knots. If you are making a knot and it's too small and then you go to sew, it's just gonna pull right through your fabric and it's gonna kind of stretch a hole in the fabric. So um, if you do it the traditional way of like tying it and then tying it again, you have to make sure you get like two or three knots in the exact same place to make a big knot. This way, you have a big knot right away. I'll show you again, um, going a little bit faster. So I've licked it, it's just a little bit damp, which makes it sticky. I pinch it, twist it around, 
pinch with my thumb, roll it off the end of my finger, and then I just kind of hold it and pull. And I just pull it down towards the end, and there I have a knot. So now I'm gonna show you how you can sew a button back on. So the tricky thing about sewing buttons is when you lose a button, you have to know where it is in order to sew it back on. So hopefully, um, sometimes your shirts will have an extra button like sewn to the inside seam. Um, hopefully you have a button that goes with it. Um, this is one that actually fell off a sweater of mine and I need to resew it, but I'm gonna show you on this test piece. Um, so first you need to figure out where it's supposed to go. Once you know where it's supposed to go, I would recommend just to hold it in place, take a pin or two, put it through the buttonhole so that it's held in approximately the right place, just like that. You've got it holding it in place at the back. Now something super important. You have a knot here that is gonna go through the fabric and catch, which means the knot is gonna be left there. So when you're starting, you always, and when you're ending, you always want to start and end from the wrong side, the back side, the ugly side. Because if I start right here at the front and I go down into the pretty colorful side, then when I pull it through, we're left with the ugly knot on the top. So we are going to start at the back side. We have my pin kind of marking where the button should be. And I'm just gonna feel around until I find the buttonhole. So I have put my needle in from the back first, the thread is attached and knotted, and then I've come through the fabric and through the buttonhole. So now I'm gonna pull it out and I have my first stitch. My needle is attached. So now I'm gonna take the pin out, but we're gonna save it because we need that in just a moment. So this is kind of tricky. Your uh, button will probably bounce around on you for a minute. Um, but you can see I've gone through one hole. Some shirts will have you doing a crisscross pattern where you go from this hole up to the one above it and then the ones across, and some will have you do parallel. So just look at what your shirt has. We're gonna do parallel today. So you're gonna pick one of the buttonholes next to it and sew right through the one next to it. And now you pull it out and you're back to the back. Now, pause. This is something important that most people don't know, so listen up. If you did this eight more times and you sewed this on really tight, you would almost not be able to button your shirt because this button is gonna be so tightly pulled against the fabric. So now that we have one full stitch front and back holding our button on here, we are going to take this pin that we set aside earlier and you're actually gonna slip it between the two stitches so that you have kind of a sandwich of the fabric and the pin and the button. Um, I'll try to be able to show you on the camera there. Um, this is gonna help because it's gonna give us just a little bit of wiggle room so that our button won't be so close to here. Um, it won't be so close to the fabric that it will give us some space. So now that you have one stitch and you have your button there separating, your needle's at the back. You're gonna go back into the first buttonhole you went in. So we can see here's the, here's the knot where we first went in and here's the thread where we came out. We're gonna go from the back into the one with the knot. If we got distracted and went back into the fabric from the front, we would have um, our thread that would loop around from the back and come up to the front and it would be a big thready mess. Um, we don't want that. My pin just fell out, so I have to put it back in here. Um, I'll show you another way to do it that might be a little easier. You can also, instead of putting it at the bottom, you can also loop it through the threads at the top and that makes it maybe a little easier to hold on to so it's not bouncing around. So we came out to the front again. We're gonna go into the back, into the hole next to it, the same one as we did before. And we're gonna do this two more times. Um, because we have a double thread, um, we don't have to do it a whole lot, but we want to do it enough that it's a little secure. Um, so we've done four stitches total on that one. We've come back out to the back, and now you're going to feel around on the back for the other buttonhole. So the other two that we haven't gone through yet. Um, okay, I just found it. So now you can see 
my needle is coming out of one of the buttonholes we haven't done yet, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna go over that pin that's stuck in there to give us a little extra wiggle room, and I'm gonna do this four times for this buttonhole. And then I will teach you how to knot things at the back. Um, I sewed for like 10 years before I learned a good way to make knots in the back, so I'm kind of excited to share that with you guys. I promise it will make your life easier if you do any kind of crafting with needles and stuff. Um, so remember our rule about we want all of the knots at the back because we don't want to have any ugly looking knots at the front. So I have stitched this parallel lines. I can take the pin out now because I'm done stitching and it gives us just a little bit of wiggle room for that button. Um, so now we're going to come to the back. We have this thread and how in the world are we going to finish it? If you take this and try to tie a knot like it's your tennis shoes, like I said, you're gonna have to like wiggle it and wiggle it and wiggle it until you get it down close to here. Because a knot up here isn't gonna help anything. You want the knot close to the fabric and then you wanna cut it off. So here's a fun little trick. You're gonna take right close to here where you made the stitches, you're gonna take just a tiny little chunk of fabric, um, almost like a tiny little bite of fabric, just like two or three threads. So I'll show you. You're gonna get just a little bit of fabric on your needle. You can see that tiny little bit there. Don't pull it all the way through. You're actually then going to take the thread that is attached to your needle and I want you to wrap it around the front of the needle. So you're gonna twist it around the front of the needle about two times. Um, so now, if you look really closely, you have a needle that has thread wrapped around it and a little bit of fabric. Now, if we've done that, as long as we pull it through, it's actually gonna make a knot for us at the bottom. So you can see as we're pulling it, it's twisted around itself and we pull it tight and it has made like a double or triple knot for us right there at the bottom. And we didn't have to do any actual tying. Um, so that's a really good tool for making knots, a good way to finish things up. One thing to point out though is this is a really big button, but if you had a small button and you did it like out to the side, um, when you turn it over, you're going to see that needle and that stitching there. So that's why you take just maybe two or three threads because you don't want to be able to see this from the front because that would be kind of icky then if you see your thread. Um, one thing to point out is when you're sewing, you should use a thread that blends in well. So black or white would be good for this. If you're torn between two, the darker usually blends in better. Uh, I probably should have picked like a bright red one for the sake of demonstration, but I didn't have it. So sorry about that. Um, so now you can see you have just sewed a button on. Um, another tool I want to introduce to you is called a seam ripper, and it looks like this. Um, hopefully you never need one of these because this is like the undo button of sewing. It's usually when you've made a mistake. Um, so it has like a pointy end here and then like a J-shaped curve. And inside that curve, there's actually a sharp blade. And then they have this blunt end that's capped with this red thing. So if you ever do have to undo something, you don't want to just pull at the threads and you don't want to take scissors to it because you could damage the fabric around it. And once you damage the fabric around it, it's really hard to repair holes in fabric. But this tool allows you to take, so we're gonna undo this button we just did, allows you to take this pointy end and get underneath the threads that you want to cut. And then just like this, because that curved part is a blade, if you just push, it'll cut them right off. So we'll do it to the other side. Um, seam rippers are really sharp, so be careful with them. You can cut yourself and well stab yourself more like or really cut the fabric um so we're gonna do the same over here push and cut and it has cut the threads for us and now we can take our button right off so hopefully you won't need seam rippers but i had to use them all the time because sometimes we aren't really thinking and we just start sewing and we make a mistake so these are very helpful um the next thing i want to teach you is um how to fix a seam that is damaged. So I have a shirt here that I got at a thrift store. That is a great example because it has a hole. Um, where did it go? 
So a seam, remember, is where two pieces of fabric come together and sometimes they will split. So we have the shirt, here's one of the side seams and there's a hole here. If we look at this from the inside, it looks like this. Here's the seam, it's attached to the other side and there's a hole right here where it's not attached anymore. So this is something you could do on a sewing machine. It would be easiest on a sewing machine because actual stitching is really, really, really small. We're looking at this smaller line down here at the bottom. Um, I won't be able to stitch that small with a needle unless I do it so slowly that I go insane. Um, but first, if you're doing seams, what you should do is this shirt is already like this because it's already made, but remember, put the right sides together. So this is a Swiss dot pattern, so the dots are the nice side. So we have the right sides laid together. So the back is the ugly side, and we want the edges lined up. And then we're gonna take pins like this with the things on the end. And with these edges lined up, you're gonna put it in and out so that it's holding it together. Um, this is always the way you should have pins perpendicular to the line of the edge, because if you are on a machine, then um, your stitching will come right up to it and you can take the pin out and keep going. You shouldn't run over pins if you're on a machine. It's not good for your machine. It seems like it's not a big deal, but I've really damaged some before. So listen to that warning. Um, so this is just a little bit. We're just going to do two pins like this. Um, we probably wouldn't even need two for a shirt, but I'm showing you for example. And then remember, we always want to start sewing from the wrong side, but because we have right sides together, that means wrong sides are on the outside. So both sides of this are ugly right now. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to pick right where this stitching has left off and go in and come out the other side. And so we've done one stitch now or we've brought it through at least. I already had this thread knotted. And so now this one's really nice because you can see the line where the stitching used to be. So you're just gonna go in one side, out the other, back and forth, really small stitches. Ooh, I just poked myself. Um, if you sew enough, you will work through some blood, sweat, and tears, quite literally. Hopefully not tears, hopefully it's a good experience, but you know, sometimes it's frustrating and you will definitely poke yourself at times. So I'm just going in one side, out the other. Now I'm at the back side and I'm coming back in. Oops, I got to one of my pins, so I'm gonna take it out because pins are really just there to help us hold things together. So by the time we reach them with our sewing, that means it's held together enough. Um, fabric is always easier to work with if it can be stretched tight. Um, so I'm kind of holding it like this with one hand. This is the part I'm sewing right here and working with it with the other hand like this. Um, so something to note is the smaller the stitches, the better. Um, if you do them too big, they're actually going to kind of pull and stretch. And that's there is a term for that, and it can be very useful. At sometimes it's called a basting stitch. Um, but when you're hand sewing, it really is worth it to do the really tiny stitches um, so that it is solid and it's all held together well. Um, because you don't want something like a side seam on a dress shirt pulling and stretching. Um, something else that's worth mentioning is there are different types of fabrics um, and some are easier than others to work with. So the main thing is that there are woven fabrics and there are knits. Woven fabrics means they're like made where the pieces intersect like this, woven on a grid. Um, and this is like cotton or like um, shorts are usually like this or like dress shirts, usually things that aren't stretchy. Um, and then there are knits, which is where it's more like loops of thread that go together. Um, and this is like sweaters. I actually have an example because you can kind of see the loops on a sweater. Um, sweaters or workout material or like stretchy clothing is usually a knit. Um, and they both have their pluses and minuses, but knits are a little harder to sew, I think. Um, so like if you're trying to fix a t-shirt, it might be a little harder than if you have like 
a pair of dress pants that you're trying to fix because it can stretch and it can move. But um, things like dress pants and dress shirts, those will ravel a lot more. And so how you finish the seams, what you do with that seam allowance is a lot more important. So don't be scared away from one type of sewing, but know that they have their own challenges and what works for one type of fabric will not work for other types of fabric. Especially if you get into like wanting to dye your own clothes. If you've ever done tie dyeing or something with writ dye, um, it can affect fabrics really, really differently. Usually you need a special type of dye if it's gonna be a synthetic fabric, like if it's a polyester knit, um, you need something different. Um, and even like cottons and linens will dye differently. But a lot of that, you just kind of have to learn by experimentation. If it's interesting to you, try it. And uh, if not, that's fine. You don't really need to know how to do that. So I am about done with my um, fixing of the seam here. If you do have a machine and you were to do this, you would do the same thing as far as right sides together, pinning it, getting it ready, and then you would just stitch in a straight line along there and make sure you tie the ends um, on a machine that's called backstitching because it kind of does it for you. So hopefully you can see I've got some little white thread stitching along that line now. Um, let's check and see how it looks from the front, see if I did a good job or not. My needle's still in here right now. Um, if we look at it from the outside, we can see it looks a little bit different, right? It's a little more puckered. It's maybe not as perfect looking. You can tell the stitching's a little bigger because there's more gaps and it's more stretchy, but there's no hole, right? It looks like it goes together. And if I wear this out, no one's probably gonna notice unless they're really looking for it. So we're gonna finish up with a knot, just like we did on the other one. Um, we're gonna take, this one might be easier to see because I'm using a white thread on a blue shirt. We're gonna take a tiny little bite of fabric. It's that blue part right there. We're gonna twist this around the front a few times. And then we're gonna pull it out and watch as it makes a knot for us right at the bottom. There we go. Ooh, this is a cheap thread, so when I pulled it just snapped. Um, the really, really nice thing about everything I'm teaching you today is needles um, come in a pack like this. Um, it would probably be two to three dollars. Oh yeah, two sixty nine. it says right here. And thread, you can get all different types of thread, but the cheap ones are probably two dollars. So you could have a kit for sewing stuff like this for four dollars and a new shirt like this probably would have been like 50 to $70. I don't know, I got it at a thrift store. So if you care about like being on a budget and being resourceful and trying to help the environment, learning to fix things or like thrift shop is really a smart choice rather than buying new. Um, and as you get more practice, if there's things that you um, see that you kind of like, but you would wanna change something, if you know how to change it, then you can just do the change yourself. So lastly, and very briefly, um, I'm gonna show you how you could hem something. Um, I am not gonna, I don't have anything that needs hemming, but this is what you could do. Um, this is our shirt again, this is the bottom of it actually. So hemming you would do if you have like a skirt or a pair of pants that's too long, um, or if you have a shirt that you want to make cropped or something like that. Um, you can see there's already a hem here. If you are certain about how much length you want off, you can just cut it right off and make a new hem. Um, I'm just gonna show you, um, this is a type where they have folded it up at least once and stitched, but you also notice I don't see any edges. There's no seam allowance here. There's none of that extra fabric, which means they've actually folded it up twice or maybe even three times. So if you're hemming something, you're gonna fold it just in on itself, fold it up. Um, if it's a really uh, like flowy or stretchy fabric, you might have to pin it once along here and then fold it again and pin it along here. Um, whenever you get it to the length of, and the number of folds you want, you really shouldn't do more than three folds. Um, you can take your pins and put them in here just like I showed you. And this can be really difficult if you're using like a silky or a really thin fabric. Um, but if you're doing something like jeans or the bottom of a shirt, it's not that difficult. And so 
You could just pin it up all the way around. Make sure it's even before you sew it. And then if you have a machine, you could just stitch right along here. Um, if you don't have a machine and you're hand sewing, um, what I would recommend doing, it takes a lot more time, but it looks really nice. Because if you have a machine and you stitch along here, you're gonna see the stitching from the front. But you can also take this part that we've pinned and kind of like hand stitch by connecting the outside to the inside. And so you'll do um, a stitch like that. And then instead of going to the back then, you'll actually come up along here next to it and take like another stitch, like maybe a quarter or an eighth of an inch away. And this would be more like a spirally seam. Um, instead of being things going in a straight line, it'll like twist around it more. Um, so I'll show you a, sh a few more examples so you can see what that would be like. Um, this takes a lot of time, especially if you're doing it on something like a dress, but we're in quarantine. So if you have the time and you want it to look really, really fancy, um, this is a way you can do it. But if it's something like jeans, which have stitching anyway, or something really long that no one's going to see, um, just use a machine. So you can see it kind of like looks like it spirals around the two and it connects this top bit here to this bit down here, which is actually going to end up being the front of our shirt. And you can see it a little bit, but you see it in those tiny little dots. Um, so that's where it's really important to, to make sure you're just taking like one or two threads on your needle and not taking a huge chunk because however much fabric you kind of bite with the needle is how much thread you're going to see at the front here later, which again, normally I'd be doing this with a blue thread, but for the example, it's nice to see with the white. So that was a lot of information about sewing. Hopefully you won't need all of this at once. That would mean you have quite a lot of mending to do, but next time something breaks, maybe you can look back at this and uh, have some tips on how to do it. Um, if there's something on here that I didn't cover, um, there's tons of YouTube tutorials on how to fix stuff and how to make stuff. Um, but some of the basic rules to remember, um, get really good at how to make knots on a needle. Um, remember that if you're sewing seams, right sides of the fabric need to go together. Um, and just remember when you're hand sewing, try to do as small of stitches as possible. Um, so if you guys fix anything, um, email me or email Mr. Potts a picture. Let me know um, if you guys are getting creative and sewing anything together. There's really tons of options, um, both for practical reasons and art reasons, of things you can do with sewing. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, I hope you guys use it and make something fun. Um, so stay healthy and stay kind. Bye.